Hello everyone, welcome to the GOI Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various aspects of geography and in this session on oceanography, we are going to learn about marine pollution. So various aspects of marine pollution or for that matter oceanic pollution is going to be discussed in this session. So please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now when we have already learned about the sea level rise and its various attributes, one of the major menace related to the sea water or ocean health is marine pollution where we are concerned that the marine area, the oceanic area, the sea area is going to be heavily polluted and it's already very heavily polluted by our action that is mainly because of anthropogenic factors. So that's where we are concerned related to marine pollution and it is part of the sustainable development goals that we must observe a good marine health for our longevity for sustainable development. So let's understand the concept of marine pollution first. So marine pollution can be defined as introduction of substances or particles to the marine environment directly or indirectly by humans resulting in negative effects such as what? Deterioration of human health, obstruction of marine activities, lowering of quality of seawater. So this is like just another pollution, right? Like we say land degradation, air pollution, water pollution. So marine pollution is also when we add effluents that is impacting the main basic nature of the ocean. So if we are doing that through various means, right, then that is considered as marine pollution. So remember, there is a significant point to be noted here that marine pollution only deals with pollution of ocean or seawater, whereas water pollution concerns pollution of all water bodies like river, lake, ocean. So that is the difference between marine pollution and water pollution. Water pollution is a larger umbrella, but marine pollution is a specific part under that umbrella of water pollution. That is important to remember. So when we see petroleum and other fossil fuels and oils washed away from the roads enter the sewage system and gradually it goes to the seawater through the river system. Remember, it is not localized phenomena. What happens? A localized phenomena becomes a globalized phenomena. That is important point to remember. So ship accidents and accidental spillages. Remember Russian oil spill in 2020 that happened. So it occurred at sea area and remember the entire marine life, marine environment was actually impacted by this. Another important point is the shipping channels in estuaries and at the entrances to ports often accompany dredging to keep them open. Now remember if there is a siltation near port, the ships won't come to the port. So what we do? We start dredging, we start cleaning up that material from there. But while doing so, we are changing the natural ecosystem, right? So the dredged material that contains heavy metals and other contaminants are often dumped out to the open sea and that enhances the pollution level as well. Apart from that, offshore oil exploration that we have learned at many places in the world. In India also we have offshore oil fields. So offshore oil exploration and extraction also pollute seawater to a great extent. But what is the need of the R then? That we should consider sustainable development goals and try and reduce as much as possible our dependency on these particular offshore oil wells or fossil fuels for that matter that would reduce this particular impact on marine areas in terms of pollution that is important to remember. Now let's elaborate further more. So if you go to the causes of ocean pollution there are numerous causes. The first and foremost is sewage. So remember lots of waste that we generate under developmental pressures that we see around cities and towns and various areas in the world. What are we generating every day is amount of sewage that is gradually increasing day by day. So sewage or polluting substances flow through sewage rivers or drainage system and actually end up in the ocean finally, right? So if you think that you have thrown some waste in the nearby lake or nearby pond or nearby just a small stream or rivulet or just for that matter a drain, Remember, it ultimately has an impact on global scenario. You don't just underestimate this particular linkage of the system, right? So that is going to be a major issue because people are not going to get aware and if they are going to continue with this particular sewage, then this problem of ocean pollution is going to rise day by day. Then second point is toxic chemicals from industries, right? 
So industrial waste has been hazardous since the rise of industrial revolution. Last 200 years, we have been polluting oceans like anything. So hazardous and toxic chemicals affecting marine life. Then we have thermal pollution because we are changing the temperature of the water. So we have aquatic animals and plants that have difficulty in surviving at those temperature. Right. So that is going to be another problem. That is going to be another cause of ocean pollution. Then third is the land runoff. Remember land based sources such as agriculture, discharge of nutrients, pesticides. Remember eutrophication concept. So that is happening. And plastic. Plastic is, has become or microplastic for that matter has become one of the biggest menace in the world now. Right. So if you can read out certain reports related to the plastics that would help you to write a bigger and better answer. So about 80% of marine pollution is contributed by this runoff. Right. So runoff picks up man-made harmful contaminants that pollute the ocean including what fertilizers, petroleum, pesticides and other forms of soil contaminants. Then fourth important point is the large scale oil spills. Now oil spills have been in news since long time now. Many oil spills that we hear and recently the Siberian Russian oil spill was very famously in news last year. So crude oil lasts for years in the sea. Remember oil floats on the surface, right? It does not dissolve so easily and it becomes very toxic for marine life. So crude oil is extremely difficult to clean up. That is one most big menace for the cause of ocean pollution that we said. Then next important point is the ocean mining. Now remember in search of the bigger industrial production of these huge amount of wealth drawing paradigm of development, we have been continuously drilling for silver, gold, copper, cobalt, zinc and several other minerals since last about 500 years. And remember what is happening because of this, the ocean surface is continuously changing due to anthropocentric approach. And remember, there is a change in the ocean ecosystem, right? So that is also adding to the pollution. Then plastic pollution, as we talked in 2006, the UN EP, if you say United Nations Environment Program estimated that every square mile of ocean contains 46,000 pieces of floating plastic. Can you observe this was in 2006. So what must be scenario in 2021? You can just think about it, right? And once discarded, plastics are weathered and eroded into very small fragments that we say as microplastic. And remember when it becomes microplastic, it's a reach around the world increases, right? So remember one of the most hazardous waste that we say is plastic and plastic materials other than litter can also be one of the major problems in marine pollution and changing the regime of oceanic currents at many places as well. For example, North Pacific Gyre is now referred to as Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Remember earlier it was North Pacific Gyre, now it has become a garbage patch where waste material from across North Pacific Ocean including coastal waters of North America and Japan are drawing together. So this gyre, this kind of vortex has become the gyre of waste and that's a huge development if you talk in terms of plastic pollution. Right. In addition of all these factors, what we have is the high impact of carbon dioxide and climate change. Remember, ocean acidification is increasing day by day and other factors like coastal tourism, port and harbor developments, damming of river, urban development and construction, mining, fisheries, aquaculture. All these factors are contributing as a great source for marine pollution and threatening the coastal and marine habitats across the world that is important to remember. So when we know the causes, we must understand the consequences of oceanic pollution as well. So what are the consequences? Effect of toxic waste on marine animals. This is evidently proven that there is a behavioral change even marine life is going to death as well. Then there is a disruption in the cycle of coral reef. So remember, we have already had a lecture on coral reef. If you have not watched the lecture on coral reef, you can go to the playlist on oceanography and you can watch that lecture on coral reef. So what happens? Oil spill floats on the surface of the water and prevents sunlight from reaching the marine plants. And remember, it impacts the photosynthesis and thus removing the coral food. That is important. So if algae is removed, coral starts to bleach then depletes the oxygen content in water. So remember if there is an ocean pollution, the oxygen content in the water is going to be reduced. And if there is less oxygen in water, what will happen? The chances of survival of these marine animals is going to get reduced. For example, whales die, turtles, shark, dolphins, penguins, all these population is going to go down, right? Excessive nutrients from sewage outfalls and agriculture runoff have contributed to the number of low oxygen that is called hypoxic situation. Remember hypoxia, hypoxia that is 
is low oxygen condition. Remember, this area is called dead zones, which have been found in northeastern Bay of Bengal. So, dead zones are there where no life is possible, right? Because of hypoxic condition. So, this is one of the most important development or consequence of ocean pollution that we see, right? So, there are now 500 dead zones covering more than 245,000 kilometers square globally right and it's a huge amount of area or ocean zone which does not support any kind of for that matter flora or fauna right so that's important apart from that eutrophication as we know when water body becomes over enriched by the minerals and nutrients right it induces excessive algal growth algal boom happens and that's where another oxygen depletion starts to happen in the water body impacting the marine life right so that's also important then failure in reproductive system of sea animals now because of this pollution, chemical pollution, there is a failure in reproductive system of these sea animals and that's going to lead to the depletion or for that matter extinction of species, right? That's important. And effect on food chain. Now remember, if there is an impact on a particular segment of animal population in the ocean, it's going to impact the entire food chain as usual, right? Because it is interconnected network as we know from the principles of ecology, right? So this entire system is going to get impacted. This, this is going to be the major consequence of all these kinds of ocean pollution. Now, let's talk about some management and conservation initiative at global level. So global program of action that is called GPA for the protection of marine environment from land-based activities. So what does it do? GPA is the only global intergovernmental mechanism, remember, between the government talks, directly addressing the connectivity between terrestrial, freshwater and coastal and marine ecosystems integratedly. So there are certain international conventions that have happened till now. First happened in 1973 called MARPOL Convention. It covers pollution of marine environment by ships, basically the ships that pollute the marine water related to their operation or accidental causes. So this was the first convention that was talked about where the list of various forms of marine pollutants like oil, noxious liquid substances, harmful substances in packaged form, sewage and garbage from ships. These were listed for the first time that which are the hazardous substances. Then happened London Convention before this particular convention, Marpol, that was in 1972, which promoted the effective control of all sources of marine pollution. So these are the two major con convention that we say international conventions. And apart from that, Greenpeace is an NGO that has certain initiatives related to conservation of ocean and marine life across the globe. It works at grassroots level with its effort. It has led to ban of destructive fishing practices, companies changing their fishing policies and creation of whale sanctuaries across the world. So that is because of the Greenpeace NGOs initiatives at global levels. And at last, let's understand some of the remedial solutions that we say or remedies for that matter for ocean pollution. So implement renewable energy source so remember that is one of the major aspect that we also learned in sea level rise and climate change as well then to encourage organic farming that is important eco-friendly pesticide usage then proper sewage treatment then landfills to be avoided spillage that is important then use of biotechnology that is something like bio remediation that is use of specific microorganisms to metabolize and remove harmful substances to treat oil spills then apart from that we have something called green lifestyle reducing our carbon footprint, have a global treaty, right? And remember, pollution and population go hand in hand. So if we have to make it livable planet, we need to also control pollution, but at the same time, population which is contributing to the pollution. So that is another point. And remember, sustainable development goal number 14, it says to conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. So goal number 14 is actually ascribed to these remedial measures or for the solutions for the conservation of ocean and the health of the ocean that we talk about. So that's all about what we have learned under the marine pollution or what we say as ocean pollution. So now when we have discussed in details about the marine pollution, its various causes, consequences, way forward, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on something called blue economy. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.